Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Grow Room. I've been working on making over my grow tent this year. I've added quite a few new things that I want to show you and I also want to show you how things are growing. First, let's just take a look at the tent itself. So this is a two by four grow tent that I got on Amazon. It's made by Apollo, and I don't believe they actually sell this one anymore. I'm not sure if Apollo is still around, but I don't think that this particular tent is still available. Um, I have been using it for several years, so it is kind of old, and I do like it quite a bit. Um, it seems very, well put together. I haven't had any problems really with it. It has plenty of holes here for fans and cables. The only thing I really don't like is that um, it does come with a wide range of hole sizes, but unfortunately none of them are three inch holes. And three inches is really what I need for the fans that I got from AC Infinity which I'll be showing you here in just a moment. Um, but it was really easy to put together. It's got this reflective silver coating on the inside, so that helps reflect any light that you have in here. So the light is really well spread with that reflective material. Um, I usually leave the door open because it just gets so hot in there. And the fans do help a lot, but when it gets up to the mid 80s in this room, it just gets super hot in there. So I've just been leaving it open for the last week or so because it's been unusually hot here. So other than the hole sizes, I think um, this is a really nice tent. It's got a few, I'm not really sure what this mesh is here. It doesn't really open, I don't think. Um, it's got one over there and also, well actually I guess it does open. So I usually just leave that closed, but maybe that would help with some, some of the air circulation. So I might start leaving those open. So that's kind of a nice little feature that I haven't actually used. And it looks like there's an, also another one here in the back behind the peppers there. So I could also open that and that might help as well. Um, but these holes that are in this tent are two inches and there's, a, I think that one up there is four inches, maybe even six inches. Um, I think that one's six inches. And then this fan over there, that one is four inches and this one is four inches. I think that one in the back is actually two inches. So the hole sizes are all over the place, but none of them are three inches, which is what I really wanted. Um, but I didn't have any fans when I bought this, so I wasn't really paying attention to hole sizes. So if you get a grow tent, just kind of keep that in mind and make sure that there's hole sizes that fit any fans that you want to get in the future. One of the other new additions that I have in the fan this year are these AC Infinity fans. So this one here is the Raxial S4 and that's an inlet fan so it will blow air into the grow tent. And this is the one, so this is a three inch um, fan and it's actually in a two inch hole. So I had to buy this um, adapter thing that goes from two inches to three inches. So that is how that is set up. And it's not ideal, but it works. And I actually heard about these AC Infinity fans from Peter Stanley. He uses those in his grow tent as well. And I got these on Amazon and I'll put a link to all of these things that I have in the grow tent in the description of this video. And then the other AC Infinity fan is up here, and it is the Cloudline T4, and that one's an exhaust fan. So this one takes the hot air from inside the grow tent, and it actually pushes it out. And this one is actually on, but it is super, super quiet. You can barely hear it. So let me show you the other side. Oh, and this is also a three inch, and that one is in a, I think it's a four inch hole. And I ended up not using a um, adapter on that one because I just have a hose that I just attached to um, in there. So it, it doesn't really need an adapter and it, the air does come out of here just fine. So I think there's no problem with that. Let's see, oh, the controllers for those fans. So the small inlet fan that's on the bottom 
it just has this, I've got cables everywhere here. Um, it has this controller here. So you, right now it's off, but you can um, set it all the way up to high. So it's just kind of a radial dial and it's a little bit louder than the exhaust fan, surprisingly, even though it's much smaller. And then I usually keep that on pretty much on the medium setting all day. And then for the big fan, it's got a pretty fancy controller here. So you can actually set trigger it to go off of um, a high temperature, a low temperature, a high humidity or a low humidity. And right now I have it set to high temperature. So it'll come on when um, it goes over 80 degrees. And then we've also got, um, it shows what the humidity in the grow tent is. So it's 57% right now, which is a little bit higher than I'd like. I try to keep it between 50 to 55%. And it's also got an alarm setting. I haven't actually used that. But anyway, I'm still playing around with how this controller works, but it's got some nice different settings that you can adjust that to. And then I do have one more fan in here. It's a hurricane clip fan. And I've heard a lot of people complain about the clip on these not being very secure. So I actually have it, I have the cable coming out of the hole up there. So it, I mean, it, it's just kind of dangling here. So it's not even really, it's not even really attached to this pole. It just, it can freely go up and down. Um, so that, that clip is not very ideal, especially on this pole here because it's so slippery. Um, so that's why I have it just kind of dangling from the cable and it's just attached here to um, center it here. So I have it off right now because it's a little bit loud, so I didn't want it to interfere with the audio. But I do keep that on, um, I think just during the daylight hours, so I have it set at the same time as the, the light. So it comes on in, at 6 a.m. and then it turns off at 9 p.m. Oh, also here's the sensor forgot to mention um, the AC Infinity exhaust fan comes with the sensor so that's what keeps track of the temperature and humidity in the grow room and I just have that coming out of the little two inch hole up at the top there and then of course the newest piece of equipment I have is this Mars Hydro TSL 2000 white full spectrum LED light and I got this as a gift from Mars Hydro for a review. And it was the perfect thing for my grow tent. I really wanted to get rid of those blurple lights I was using before. So I was really happy um, to get this from Mars Hydro. And my favorite part here is the, the dimmer switch. So you can easily change the, the dimmer with just a turn of a button here, a turn of a knob. And I have it currently set to just under 50%. And this is a 300 watt light. And one thing that I didn't mention in my unboxing video is this is a fanless light. So you can see there are no fans at all on this light. Instead, it's got this kind of a heat, heat sink, I think it's called. But this absorbs all the heat that comes off of the the drivers here and they don't really get super hot. I suppose if you have it maxed out it might, um, but it's, you can touch it and it's not, it's not really hot. And I think the exhaust fan here also help, helps with the dissipating any heat that's coming off of the light here. But it, you can touch it and you're not going to burn yourself or anything. So it does um, dissipate the heat really well. These drivers are very nice. And let's see, also I mentioned um, I have this at just under 50% because I did actually get a light meter and I highly, highly recommend using a light meter even if it's just the, the phone apps. There's some phone apps out there that are actually pretty accurate as long as you have them set up properly. So I currently have the light about 20 inches from these guys in the front here. The ones in the back are a little bit taller and I actually did top some of them because they were just getting too tall. Um, but the back ones were at about 19 inches for the back ones. Um, but I also moved the tomatillos in here and the tomatillos are super tall and they're a little bit closer to the light than I would like, um, but I don't have anywhere else to put them. So they're 
they're about 12 inches from the light which is pretty close and I'll show you but there is a little bit of damage I think on some of the leaves there and I think it's because of the light um, but it's kind of hard to control how high to put it when you have plants that are just such different heights so I I did lower it a little bit if these weren't so tall I would actually increase it to about 50 percent so this is the light sensor that I got from Apogee Instruments it's the MQ 500 and this seems to be the the light meter that most people that do a lot of LED reviews use so this is really helpful so that you know how strong or how high or low to make your light. For the longest time I've been playing a guessing game and just guessing at how high or how strong the light um, should be and I've been failing at that quite a bit. A lot of times my seedlings will get super leggy or the leaves will burn and I'm just tired of playing that game so I finally decided to get this light meter so I know exactly how high or how strong um, my light should be to my plants and it's been really really helpful. So when I first got this light I didn't have a light meter so I was just kind of guessing at how strong it should be and I've been burning a lot of plants lately and sometimes I'm getting them really leggy so I decided to err on the side of caution and I set it really low so I think when I first got it I had it set to around 25 to 30 percent um, because I just didn't want to burn my plants uh, but when I got this light meter, the first thing I did was take a reading, and this does a PAR reading, um, and I found that it was set too low. So I went ahead and turned it up to 50%, and that seemed to be the right um, strength of the light when the plants were smaller. So now that they're bigger, I've had to turn it down to about 45%. So to use this, it comes with this little blue cap here, so you just take that blue cap off and then you've got the the sensor there and these do you can buy this a wand that lets you just kind of stick it in there um, so you don't have to use your hand which is really helpful but I decided um, not to get that I may get that in the future um, but for now um, you just turn the on button and then you just put this sensor wherever you want to take a reading so for example um, this I think is probably the shortest plant so it's got about a 160 par so it's not very strong um, it probably could be a little bit higher if I had the door closed it would probably get a little bit more light there um, and then here we've got 230 back here we've got 275 and then when we go taking a look at the tall tomatillos back here we're looking at 430 par back there so that is a little bit higher than I would like so I'll, I'll give you a closer look at the the leaves there um, but the ideal range you want is between 300 and 400 so we're ranging everywhere from 160 up to 430 so it's kind of hard when you've got plants that are such different heights but hopefully I'll be taking these tomatillos outside here pretty soon and then that should help the, the peppers out a lot more. The only other thing I've got in the grow tent here is a heat mat which it's been so hot lately that I've not had to turn it on but this heat mat here fits the grow tent perfectly. It's a two by four um, heat mat and it just fits right into the floor of the the tent here and also this tent comes with this removable insert here so I guess if you have any spills or something it won't get um, onto your floor or whatever is underneath there um, but I, I find that is also pretty helpful and it's reflective so let's go ahead and take a look at how the plants are doing well let's start with the tomatillos here so you can see some of the leaves here there's a little bit of burning there and they get kind of kind of a little bit bubbly um, you can see the one the tallest ones here have the the most damage and these are drying out super fast but let me take one of these out for you and you can see really how tall these things are so here is our tomatillo and this is actually a pretty tall um, three and a half inch pot so just the pot itself is about six inches um, but this thing is tall, tall, tall. 
So we're looking at over about 24 inches tall, this tomatillo is, and all of them are about that tall. So they're really getting too tall for this space. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be sending those guys outside and I'm gonna start acclimating those to some sunlight here, um, probably this weekend. So we're supposed to have some rainy weather, so it's not gonna be too sunny. So that will give them a good um, chance at getting some acclimated to the sunshine. And also quite a few of these guys are getting some flowers. So if I see any flowers opening, then I'm trying to get those pinched off. But for the most part, on the pe both the peppers and the tomatillos, the flower buds are just falling off by themselves, which saves me from having to pick them off. So I just wait till they open. And there's only been a few that have actually opened that I've had to pinch off. Um, but that is something that I've been taking time to do every chance I get. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the peppers that are in here. I've got all of the chinense varieties as well as the bacatums. The bacatums are there in the back and the chinense varieties are here in the front. And this one is probably one of my, my favorite peppers here, at least as far as how it's looking. So this is the Cookie Monster Bubblegum and it is just a beautiful Look at those beautiful big leaves. Um, it's starting to, I haven't topped any of the chinense varieties, um, but they're starting to fork now at the top. So they shouldn't be getting too much taller, hopefully, but I'll be starting to acclimate the peppers here in the next week or so. So they're not gonna be in the grow tent for too much longer, but that one is just a beautiful looking pepper. So I think the tallest one of the chinense varieties is this one back here. And oh, look, this is another Cookie Monster Bubblegum. So this is, looks pretty close to the same as the other one we just looked at. Really healthy looking. Um, actually there is a lit, I don't know if you can see that, there is a little bit of a, a burn mark here. I might have gotten some water on the leaves and that might have got burnt there. Um, but the stems are looking really thick and nice. Let's see, so the only purple leafed variety that I have is this Pimenta Puma. And it started forking pretty early on, um, but it's looking pretty good here. There's a little bit of green starting to show in the, in some of the top of the leaves, but it's a nice looking pepper there. I've got two of those. And then let's see, there's another Cookie Monster bubblegum. This one just started forking too. Let's see what else we have. This one here is a Texas chocolate bonnet. So this is one of Kang Star's varieties and it's looking good as well. It's just starting to fork at the top there. So we're not gonna see too much more growth or height on that one. And then here is a Fatali pepper. So this one has pretty good sized leaves, nice and green, very healthy looking. These are going through water pretty quickly. I've been watering probably every other day or so. And then I've got a few Fatalis in here. Here's one of them. Looks like this one is already starting to fork at the top as well. Nice big fat leaves. I am starting to lose some of the lower leaves on a lot of these peppers, which I think is, is pretty normal. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I think the last chinense variety we have to take a look at here is called peachy. So this one is a um, Sherwood, Tony Sherwood, I believe his name is, cross. I'm not sure what it's a cross with, but I think it's probably some kind of a peach colored pepper. So I'm looking forward to trying that one. All right, so we're gonna set these chinense varieties aside here and take a look at the bacatums. So the bacatums are the ones that grow super tall. So we'll take these out. So I've topped almost every one of these. You can see this one here is much taller than the rest. This is the only one that I didn't top. And we've got some flower buds that look like they're just starting to open here pretty soon. So I'm gonna be taking some of those off. Um, but you can see the lower leaves have fallen off on here and we're not getting a whole lot of side growth. There are some some side suckers here that are starting to come up. And if there's any suckers or little 
stems that come out towards the base, then I usually take those off. Um, so I'm just going to take that one off because we don't want any growth that far down because I'm going to be burying, when I plant these, I'm going to be burying most probably up to here underground and more roots will form along that area. So this one is the Tangerine Splash. So the Tangerine Splash is a cross, actually an accidental cross um, that I did in my greenhouse last year. Um, so it's the Ahi Tangerine from Susan Garza. That is one of her crosses. And then that was accidentally crossed with the Sugar Rush Striped. So the F1 pods from this were really, really neat. I'll um, show a picture of that here in the video, but I'm looking forward to seeing what comes of this F2 variety. So this is the one I didn't top. Actually, I think, oh, this one is a Sugar Rush Stripe. I don't, oh yeah, I think I did top that one. Um, so this is one of the first ones I think I topped. Actually, no, I think that one forked on its own down there. So I don't think I topped this one here. Um, we do have a little bit of burning on that leaf for some reason. Um, but that's the Sugar Rush Stripe. And then here we have another Sugar Rush Stripe. And that one has a lot of long stems coming out from the middle. And I don't think I topped this one either. So there's actually a few of these that I didn't top. So if they start forking on their own, then I usually don't top them. And here is a Tangerine Splash, and this one I did top. So you might be able to see where I cut it right here. So we've got lots of new um, stems coming out of the main stem. So we're gonna have, I think these are a lot more productive when we top them. So I tend to always top my bacotums just because they get super tall. So here is another Tangerine Splash that I topped and we've got lots of new side growth coming out of there. So pretty much all the back row are the Sugar Rush Stripe and the Tangerine Splash. So on the front row, we have our Piri Piris, um, and I've never grown the Piri Piri before, but it looks um, pretty neat. I did top, I think, all of these ones. So we've got lots of new growth that's come out of the side of the stems here. So that one is looking really nice. And these feel, you can tell if they need water when they're really light. So this is feeling really light. The leaves haven't started drooping yet, um, but that's gonna happen very soon if I don't water those. Um, so we've got two, three Piri Piris. So here is another Piri Piri here. And then we've also got my cross. So this is the lemon drop crossed with the gochu pepper. So this one I also topped and we've got lots of side growth coming out here. So I can't wait to get that in the ground. And then the other cross we have is called Ahi, Ahi Lolo. And I'm not sure what makes up this cross. I'll have to look at my, my notes, but this isn't, this isn't one of my crosses. This is from Sunrise Pepper Labs. He's on Instagram. Um, but this is another one that I topped. So we've got lots of new growth coming out of the side there. Um, a little bit of burning on the leaves, but not too bad. Um, I think some of the lower leaves have been coming off. I'm just gonna pinch off some of those side shoots that are close to the bottom here and that will help um, strengthen the upper growth if you remove the, the ones that are towards the bottom there. So that is all the peppers that we have. Oh, actually I did toss a few other peppers in here. So this one is the Lady Han Gochu. So any peppers that got too tall for my grow shelves, I just kind of put them in here because they had more room to grow. So this is one of them, and I think I have a couple of this variety in here but this one was growing too tall. I didn't top this one, but it is starting to fork on its own, so I don't think I need to. So this one is called Holy Moly, and it's another annuum pepper, but it was another one that was getting really tall for the shelving, so I decided to put that in the, the grow tent as well. And I think that is all we have in the grow tent. So I'm gonna be starting to migrate these outside very soon, um, and that'll give what's left in here a little bit more space. I hope you enjoyed the, the tour of the grow tent. If you have any questions or have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.